Well guys, I've talked to a few people between episodes and uh, that know a little bit more about this game and they've told me that I'm on the right track here. So I'm going to go back to Beetlejuice now. This should be the proof that we need to show that it was the Micon who destroyed Syra. So here we go. Tana, we have brought proof that the Micon Deep Children were the ones that destroyed Syra. How are we going to like hunk a massive like shell out of our ship to show? I mean, surely she could just see. These fragments, they are identical to the debris we found near the punctures on Syra. What a coincidence. I guess that the fragments might be organic. To have survived re-entry, nothing organic would remain. Unless, unless it was genetically constructed for this purpose. And only the Micons possess this capability. The Micons will pay dearly for their crimes. We will not sit here and do nothing while the Micon fiends are free to roam the galaxy, perpetrating their evil. You wanted our cooperation in fighting the Urquan. You got it. Provided you first help us seek our revenge against the Micon race. Help us to destroy them. Right, so, uh, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna destroy the Micon? You don't even have any ships, you're kind of slave shielded. That's right. Starship officers aboard, and they're all eager to go after the Micons. But without our penetrator starships, we're totally ineffective. So our first step has to be recovering our space patrol combat fleet. We know that the Urquan didn't destroy them. They never waste anything. But we believe they have sealed them in some kind of deep vault in the surface of an alien planet. Ah, now we have seen a vault on an alien planet. We saw it a couple episodes back. So maybe that's the one. Yes, it is. Epsilon Camelopardaris 1. Wonderful. Then the job is already almost complete. Captain, we've assembled a small team of our most skilled officers. We will send them to your ship on board their own small shuttle. We feel that in the interest of efficiency, we keep our officers away from your crew, at least until the mission is over. As soon as you arrive at the vault, our people will take over, figure out a way to open the vault, and bring our penetrators back here. Okay, so we've got a big battle to fight now, maybe? I don't know. Maybe we don't do the part of the fighting, actually. When your mission is successful, maybe then we can get to know each other better. Maybe, Tana, maybe, but for now we've got, we got some important stuff here. We've got to go and get those ships, Tana. We need to go and get the ships, and we've got to go and get the ships quick. Um, do we need to get them quick? I don't even know. We could just... At this stage, we could pretty much do whatever we want. I mean, we could. We don't have to get the ships now. We could go on to some other quest. We know what we're doing in this one. It seems like a pretty long quest. I think we want to sort of have a break. So maybe we do want to just go on to another quest now. Maybe we want to go back to Earth. Uh... And we also want to go and find out about those Supox and Utwig up there. We want to go and find out a bit more about those. Because they seem quite interesting. Um, so those are people we want to go and see. Um, well, we've already seen the Utwig. We haven't seen the uh, we haven't seen the Supox yet. So we'll go and meet those. Um, so maybe there's a sort of quest with the Utwig there. Because they seem to have some problems as well. So here we are back at the Starbase. It's time we get talking to the Commander. But first of all... We're going to outfit our star... Well, actually, we don't need to outfit our starship, because we can go and get fuel from the Elnormia. We've got quite a few um, points from the Rainbow Worlds now, so we probably don't need to buy any more fuel. We can just use the Elnormia. And we've also got uh, some crew we need to get. We filled up on crew, and now we can talk to Commander Hayes. Here we go. Hello, Captain. I know you're busy, but I've got some news. Captain, I have an unpleasant topic to discuss with you, but this needs to be resolved right away. There's some kind of wild rumor blowing around the Starbase that you have sold your own crew to the Druge as slaves. Pretty crazy, huh? Look, Captain, I, I know you would never do anything like that, and I'm sorry of course, of course. I even had yeah. to mention this. Um, but now I can assure yeah, everyone that this is just one of those damn cool true. lies that get spread during wartime. Very serious Thank business. Thank you for your patience, Captain. Yes, of course I would never do that. Um, I don't even know how they even knew about that. How would they even know about that? Oh, actually, no, of course, I still have people on board from... Well, no, I didn't. It never minerals happened, of course. Fire, eh, never mind, we won't talk about that anymore. Uh, more minerals, tons of minerals. We've got tons of IU, so fine. Um, 
Yeah, can we analyze those deep egg case follow. fragment things? Subject, oh, and the rosy sphere. Data. The specimen is five centimeters in diameter, perfectly smooth and composed of a blood red translucent substance. Tests show that it has atypical ferromagnetic properties, but is utterly non-conductive. Summary, probably a precursor tool. Function, unknown. The next entry in the analysis is subject Micon egg case. Data, we really didn't know Micon came from eggs, but our analysis of this sheath shows that it's been subjected to phenomenal temperatures and pressures. The most unusual aspect of the egg case is its size. We know Micon's range in height from 0.5 to 3.5 meters, but our reconstruction of the whole egg case shows it to be over 25 meters high. Summary, if a Micon came out of this, it's gotta be really big. The next entry in the analysis is Subject Sirene Pilot Shuttle. Data, as yet the field research team has failed to report back to their group leaders. When we call them, they describe being deep in study and wish to attend to a few important details before returning to the base. Summary? Several group leaders have volunteered to assist the team to help them where they can. Yeah, yeah. That's the end of our scientist report. Yeah, Hayes knew what was going on as well, as well as me. Yeah, you can see right through the, the other man. Um, Alright, so let's go. Two to Bart the Starbase, and I think it is a good time to go and see the Mel Norme again, because I think we need to start finishing up on some of this information, start getting to the end. We're getting close, I think. I mean, we've had a lot of information. I, You know, we've got a lot of information so far, and I feel like we're getting closer to the end, so I guess the Mel Norme news goes with that. So, let's talk to the Mel Norme with the Ungar caster. So, as per usual, we will wait for them to appear on the minimap. And here they are. They have appeared. And they look lovely now. They look really different. I don't know if I've already said that. They're brilliant now. They've got a really nice texture. So here we go. Mel Norme. I would like to make some purchases, please. Um, because, of course, we've already sold. Have we already sold the rainbow item stuff? I can't even remember if we have. Have we? I know, we haven't. We need to sell all those. And also, oh wow, that's good. Yeah, that's a really good amount of information there. Uh, that was a bit strange. Um, okay, so it looks like it also takes the credits halfway through the um, the, the the talk with him now. But also, we're going to get tons of stuff from here. Five. That's going to be like two thousand five hundred. Oh Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Awesome. So we got tons of credits now. I mean, we're not going to run out for a long time, I don't think. I mean, if, if information is like 75, yeah, this is going to keep us going for a while. So first of all, fuel. We need to stock up on fuel. Um, that's going to be pretty much the most expensive thing from this, you know, 160. Uh, but now it's time for information. How wonderful, Captain. And we'll start off with some information about current events. Now, of course, one thing about the Melnorme information at the moment is that it's sort of a bit behind, so some of this might not be so useful, so you might want to skip it. I don't know. See see how you feel. So let's, let's see how it goes. You three, who live in the Aquarii constellation, have grown very depressed of late. They accidentally broke the supposed... Ultron, sold to them by the felonious Druge. As a consequence, they are morose and melancholic, and will probably be unwilling to help you fight the Urquan. If you wish to gain them as allies, we recommend that you acquire the broken Ultron, as if it ever worked, and find some suitable replacement parts. Our information indicates that you could find these items in three different places. A rosy sphere at the Druze trade world. An aqua helix somewhere in Thradash space. And a clear stable, which is currently in the possession of the Pekak. Captain, 
That was the last current event we have for sale. Ah, okay, so we need to go to Thradash Space to go and get the Aqua Helix, I think it was called. And that's the last part of whatever the Ultron fixing thing is, so we need to do that. We suspect that they are melding their two species to form some kind of new hybrid race. A race which may well be powerful enough to destroy the Urquan single-handedly. However, by our calculations, this process will take many decades, if not centuries. Should you wish to talk to them, we recommend you invest in a hyperwave broadcasting system, which is powerful enough to penetrate the shield around their world. Ah, so the Trenjesu were the crystalline silicon people, so we definitely want to go and talk to them. And if they're making some sort of epic race that can destroy the Urquan, we definitely want those on our team. This time, while the Urquan have their attention elsewhere, to expand their sphere of influence as fast as possible. The Micon colonize planets by launching top spore pods from orbit and injecting them under the planet's surface. Months later, after the spores have grown hundreds of thick, fibrous tendrils under the planet's crust, the tendrils suddenly thrust up out of the planet and create huge calderas. Not incidentally, filling the planet's atmosphere with the Micom's preferred gases, clouds of superheated steam and sulfuric acid. Yeah, we've seen the effects of that. Uh, well, I haven't personally, but the Cyrene have, uh, and we know that we can destroy. They can. They can destroy planets quite easily, actually. Don't know why they don't do it more. I mean, they could have destroyed Earth. We're just lucky. So I think that's it for now from the Mel Norme, and it's time to get on with one of the two quests that we pretty much have going at the moment. We've got the Ultron fixing quest, or whatever it's actually meant to be called. I don't know. And then we've also got the Cyrene versus. Uh, uh, versus Micon quest. So let's get going. Right, so since we've done so much with the uh, the Cyrene so far, decided we're going to go visit the Supox, and it seems like we have found their home world. Beta Library, um, we probably got told that at some point, but I just forgot. Um, but here we go, the, here's their home world. Their ships look quite interesting, they're sort of like weird. Sort of, I don't even know what they are. Let's talk to them. Fellow carbon creature. May your roots always be well watered. Well, that's a different race. Wasn't expecting that at all, but cool. They're not they're not hostile. Happy with that. So uh yeah, we come from Earth. We come in peace. Our starship is called the Nova Mace. Are they always friends of yours? We asked that. Could ask that. But it's a bit obvious, isn't it really? I mean they are. Oh, let's just ask it anyway. Strong cultural bond with the Utwig. They have been the foundation around which we have grown our starfaring culture. We are not only allies, but we are also friends. You should go meet with them. They could use some excitement. You see, they are a little depressed and morose right now. Usually they are most festive and fun. Yeah, they seem to be a bit down the dumps at the moment because they've broken their Ultron. Um, I guess we just have to follow along with the story. I guess it doesn't expect us to know what the Ultron is at this point. So let's just go along with it. Oh dear! What is it? Yeah, they... an Ultron. Actually, to be fair, we don't know what the Ultron actually is, so we might want to actually ask. What is the Ultron? I don't actually understand what it is. And claimed that it would give the Utwig superpowers. Unfortunately, the Utwig believed the Druze and bought the Ultron. However, the device did make the Utwig very happy. Of course, we didn't tell them what we really thought of the Ultron. That they were vapid fools to buy a piece of junk for a planet's ransom. We went along with the falsehood. And in doing so, showed our own stupidity. Then, one sad day a few years ago, 
be who between Proctor dropped the Ultron during a particularly energetic and festive ritual. Now the Ootwigs are morose and depressed. They feel they cannot ever achieve greatness because they lost the power of the Ultron. They even gave the broken device to us, saying that they couldn't stand the sight of it anymore. We are worried that the Ootwigs are so depressed that they may use their ultimate weapon. Here, you take the Ultron. Maybe you can do something with it. Okay, so we got the broken Ultron now. Thanks for that. I don't know if it's going to come in useful for us. Maybe we can get the uh, Utwig on our side. They did look like they had some pretty powerful ships. Um, that second one, I is so tempting. Unfortunately, I don't we think it would go d go down very well with these guys. Maybe they don't know what broccoli is or cheese, for that matter. So we tried to figure out how to fix the darn thing, or at least get some of the flashing bits working again. But for all the Druge's falsehoods, the Ultron is some kind of artifact, and we could not synthesize the necessary replacement parts. Perhaps on your journeys, you will find the elements necessary to repair the Ultron. Then you could give it to the Utwig, and maybe they wouldn't be so depressed. Right, so apparently it's one of the only artifacts which can be fixed. Just by coincidence, it happens to be able to be fixed. And for that reason, we are going to do that. So, can we fix it now with like some of the parts? The Rosie Sphere and the Clindle Sphere? Will that... Uh, the cl Clear Spindle, will that do anything? Clicking on it doesn't seem to do too much. Okay. Maybe we need all parts. Maybe we need all three parts for it to work. Or, maybe there's some sort of mechanic that I don't know in this game. And again, it'd be very useful if you told me in the comments what I have to do to fix the parts. Because it isn't really game-breaking if you do tell me. So, it'd probably be quite useful because I might actually get stuck and because of one stupid thing that I don't understand. Um, so yeah, as we just saw there, the, the, the Murnaherm and the Chenzesu are around the area. So the Murnaherm is what they must have combined with the, 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 the Chenzesu. Uh, to make whatever race they are creating. Of the epic super race that can defeat the Urquan. So maybe we want to go and visit there. Um, so now there's another thing that we need to concentrate on. Well, not concentrate, but another thing that has has raised has raised questions. We definitely want to go and talk to them. They'll give us some advice, hopefully, if we can talk to them through the Hypewave caster. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time in Star Control 2.